So welcome back to Bible study. We are looking at the Bible readings for Pentecost, and those are Ezekiel 37, 1 through 14, Psalm 104, 24 through 35, Acts chapter 2, 1 through 21, and John 15, 20, verse 26 through 27, and 16, 4 through 15. And uh, we begin with our prayer. Mighty God, you breathe life into our bones and your spirit brings truth to the world. Send us this spirit, transform us by your truth and give us your language to proclaim your good news. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. All right, so um, we'll, just, we'll just go with the, the readings as they are um, in the order we got them in the bulletin. So we'll go ahead and start with Ezekiel. And uh, this is, I think, a pretty well-known story. It's about the valley of the dry bones and then the bones getting reconnected and everything. Um, who, which way do we want to go? So, so we'll go this way. Are you, are, you, are you feeling good for that? What am I reading? Ezekiel? Ezekiel, yeah. Oh, yeah. Ezekiel? Uh, <laughs> yeah, that song, them bones, them, them, bones, them, them dry, dry bones. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, right, yeah. Do you want us to sing it? <laughs> the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of the valley. It was full of bones, and he led me around among them. And behold, there were many on the surface of the valley, and behold, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Then he said to me, prophecy over the, these bones and say to them, O dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones. Behold, I will, will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I pro prophesied, there was a sound, and behold, a rattling, and the bones came together, bone to its bone, and I looked, and behold, there were sinews on them, and flesh had come upon them, and skin had covered them, but there was no breath in them. And he said to me, prophecy to the breath prophecy, son of man, and say to the breath, thus says the Lord God, come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on these slain that they may live. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stood on their feet an exceedingly great army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. Behold, they say, our bones are dried up and our hope is lost. We, will, we are indeed cut off. Therefore prophecy and say to them, thus said the Lord God, behold, I will open your grave and raise you from your graves, O my people, and I will bring you unto the land of Israel. And you shall know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and raise you from your graves, O my people. And I will put my spirit within you, and you shall live, and I'll place you in your own land. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will do it, declares the Lord. Okay, thank you. That was, that was a long Bible passage. Very, very, very good. It was good, good good for you um, yeah as we were saying earlier that all the Bible readings this weekend basically were on the longer side so <laughs> we had yeah. a, lot, a lot of Bible readings uh -huh. um, but it is okay so the theme is of course the Holy Spirit is Pentecost is the giving of the Holy Spirit um, and so all of the Bible readings will uh, in some way or other also reference about God's Spirit or the Holy Spirit and then this obviously is about how God's Spirit, um, God sends the Spirit to restore life. Although it's actually, it's in a vision. The Spirit is uh, also helping uh, Ezekiel see this vision. So 
it's it's kind of um, it's a it's a way of expressing that, that to me it's a big way of saying that God's spirit brings back life that that's a big part of what God's Holy Spirit is doing is helping bring back life helping restore life not in the literal way that, that you know again this this is meant as a metaphor that's one thing um, our son Paul he likes monsters and I think in his own head most of the monster movies that he actually has ever watched are like the really old ones, even more like black and white. And so it, it, not that they're meant to be funny, but they're not nearly as really, really gory scary as like modern movies love to make the monsters like super gory and scary. So knowing what people could do in movies nowadays, sometimes I... I don't. I try not to liter picture it too too much because it'd be like yikes. It's, that would be kind of creepy, kind of scary. But really, overall, the message is always to be hope, offering hope that this is that this is where they. So what the situation is that um, bless you. They the this is the time of what's called the Babylonian exile. Um, one of the things I was reminded of in looking into this passage again, the Babylonian exile, a key date is 587 uh, BCE. So that means go backwards in dates. You know, like you have to think backwards in the BC. B BCE means before the Common Era, which are it's, so they changed the way some ways of acknowledging. So we used, we're probably maybe used to BC and AD. You've, you've heard that, you know. And then um, then they kind of adjusted it slightly to make it more generic, I guess you could say. So BCE means before the common era, and then CE means common era. But it's still kind of the same juncture. It's from going counting backwards to starting counting, counting forwards, I know. And I don't know if it was a good idea or not, because part of the letters are the same as before. I'm not sure if they should have come up with something so different than you didn't like relate it, but at any rate. Here's what the thing was though, what was um, kind of important, and I had forgotten this detail. So the Babylonians had already run over Israel one time already in 597. And that was 10 years earlier, because remember we're going, counting from higher down, all right. And then enough leaders had been left behind that they were able to kind of rally people to, to kind of have another try to try to throw off the Babylonians. They did not succeed. So in 587, that was the real, like then they, they just didn't, they, that's when they destroyed Jerusalem. They destroyed the temple. They absolutely um, completely wiped out the line of King David of, of, that, were, that were known, right? So, so there was no more capital city, no more temple, no more line of David. And, and God's people have already, a good a portion of them had already been away from their home 10 years. Now the rest of any of the leaders that could have stirred up trouble had also been taken into captivity in Babylon. Babylon, Babylon. And so now they're like, what, what hope is there? Is there... Can there even be a future? Are we still God's people? You know, if we don't have Jerusalem, if we don't have the temple, if we don't have the line of David, are we God's people? I mean, this is the kind of, this, this was a huge crisis time. And the phrasing to express how they, they feel that huge loss is our bones are dried up. That was, and um, there's a few, I, you know, I think, you know, honestly, I can't remember the exact words, but I just know in some of the Psalms, sometimes that phrase is also there talking about like, you know, like I am so worn out, my life is nearly over. And it'll talk about the phrase will be my bones are dried up. So it's, it's kind of, it's um, a metaphor for saying, I think life is over. I don't think there's a future. I, I have, I am so lost of everything. I just have no energy and all that. And so this is, that was God's people. That's where they were at. So now the, the spirit, God uses the spirit to give Ezekiel this message and, um, and this image, I guess you could say, this story. 
And it is, again, it's very, it's very vivid, so it does catch your imagination. Um, one of the other things about this passage is it's a, an opportunity to be reminded of what is the word for spirit in, in, from the Old Testament, from the Hebrew. And the word is ruach, and it's with a kind of a ha. Johnny, Johnny Wenstrom's not here today. I know he could do a, he could do a good ha kind of sound. Um, and so ruach is a word for spirit. Actually, usually I hear it, wind, spirit, breath. So it could be translated as wind, it could be translated as spirit, it could be translated as breath. And in this one passage, one reading, we have the one word shows up, but sometimes it's translated spirit, sometimes it's translated breath, sometimes it's translated wind. So I, I know that the people who do the translating figure, okay, this, this is what makes sense. Here we should use the word spirit. Here we should use the word as breath. Here we should use the word as wind. And I think I can see where that can make sense. And my one thing as far as uh, knowing it's God's spirit, if the words of the Lord are next to the word ruach, it's kind of a giveaway. So the, now you say spirit of the Lord. So it's not until we get into the New Testament, though, that, that we find the, the I, at least most Bibles do not capitalize spirit. It's still a lowercase. And I think that's to honor that the recognition or knowledge of God as a holy trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it does that, that recognition does not come until the New Testament. And then in the New Testament, when it says spirit, because we understand God as holy trinity, then the word gets capitalized because there's the Father, there's the Son, there's the Holy Spirit. So, um, and, and I like to think about, so, you know, we're, we're thinking, we're considering, um, you know, God, the Holy Spirit. Um, sometimes that's probably the harder of the Trinity to kind of feel like you understand in some ways. Um, you know, God, the Father, creates us, provides for us, takes care of us, guide, you know, like a you know like a loving father giving guidance and things like that. Um, Jesus the Son is probably in some ways we should say the easiest to know because we've got a lot of <laughs> the testimony of all four gospels and some of the letters of the New Testament as well that you know kind of help us in know, knowing who Jesus is. And then there's the Holy Spirit and it's like gosh that Holy Spirit's just all over the place which is again kind of the point. It's um, I feel like in some ways I think of the Holy Spirit is God in action, God making things happen, God giving the words or the message. You know, it's it's, and so it is. It is making God present, and so I could think of that that way. And then when there's life, when life is given in the creation story, especially Genesis two, is it's that there is this, uh, that's the part where God actually shapes the first human being out of clay. That's, that's Genesis 2. And it's just sort of inanimate, right? It's just, it's the shape of a human, but there's no actual life. And then God breathes into. And that is, again, the same concept in some ways of what's being described here. That was the first creation. This is kind of a recreation. And, you know, to, to have no hope and to be told very, very strongly, no, it's not over. You are my people. You will be restored. I have, I have not left you. I am giving you life. And I am with you. So that's, that's kind of the heart of, of that. Well, the, the, um, the reading of the psalm is also brings out a bit about God's spirit. And um, I don't know if it's hugely different, but let's take a look. The whole of Psalm 104 is mostly creation, mostly looking at creation, right? Um, but we don't do the whole entire psalm. But it is one of the ones, um, it starts out, bless the Lord, O my soul. O Lord, my God, you're very great. Psalm 103 is the one I know a little better. Bless the Lord, O my soul. 
and all that is within me, bless God's holy name. Um, so I would bless the Lord, O oh my soul. That's the beginning of the psalm. And then it looks around at creation and, you know, just praising God and, and talking a lot about creation and God creating everything. And it kind of seems to start out more, a little more on the land, kind of talking about the land and all the creatures on the land. And then it kind of turns a little more towards the water. And that's where, um, that's where we get in on the psalm at that point. It's more like on the water. Which just made me, made me think about, um, I don't remember what Bible stories Camp Hope is for this year, but I know the theme is on the water. So maybe we need to pick up on a little bit of Psalm 104 for that, uh, for that theme. But all right. Um, Jeannie, could you read for us um, that? Let's see. So it's beginning, Psalm 104, beginning verse 24 uh, through the end, through 35. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is the sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the, and the Leviathan, which you formed, to frolic there. These all look to you to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up, when you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and it trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke. I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. I do, I do. Um, there is always this little part of these psalms that have been going on. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And get rid of the wicked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But then the wicked, are, they're, that's the ones who want to mess up God's good creation. So I get, I mean, it does make sense, but it's still just, I don't know. It's just been positive, 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 positive. Oh, yeah, get rid of those bad guys. And thank you, Lord. Bless the Lord. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so, so like I said, there's been a lot already before this, um, just again, talking about the goodness of creation and plants and animals and all kinds of beings and everything like that. Um, even even elements of the sky, the stars, the moon, that sort of thing. And then we get for, um, it doesn't spend a long time about the water, but it does give us some of the water. And, and then when it gets to where it says, these all look to you and you give them their food in due season. And that's talking about everything that's gone before in the whole psalm. So basically, it's every living creature. It doesn't matter where, within the air, on the land, in the water, Every living creature looks to you, Lord, for life. You know that you are that you are that source of life, and the part of the way that is also expressed relating to spirit is where it says, I think let's see, verse twenty nine and thirty. Um, yeah, when you hide your face, they are dismayed. When you take away their breath, they die and return to their dust. When you send forth your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. And so again, it's um, it's a reminder that connection of God's spirit is is the source of life. You know, um, when God's breath, wind spirit breath, back to that. Um, this doesn't focus so much on the wind, but it's still that spirit breath kind of combination there of the of the word ruach, and that that's the actual source of of life. And again, I think it's an echo of the Genesis story, reminder of that story about how God brings us life. But it, again, it's also stretching it though because. We all know without breath, we die. I don't remember what the exact number of minutes your uh, human can survive without oxygen, but it's not a, not a real long time. And the only reason some people get through longer, it's like when they fall in cold water and it kind of sends your body into sort of a, sort of a type of hibernation sort of thing, like it kind of, and it's only when that happens that people have been pulled back and they might've been 
without breath longer, but but right then their their body was a little bit. If it wasn't too long in the cold, it was actually ironically kind of like they can actually come out of it better than if like just normal being in regular air and everything. So I mean, it is the most essential thing. <clears throat> Um, we have to have water, we have to have food, but more than anything, we have to have air. And I think, I think making that connection between us and our connection with God is another way of trying to get across that more, and more than anything, we need to be connected with God. You know, that's, it's another way of expressing how, how vital and important that is for us. So it's not just physically existing, it's our whole existence, our, our spiritual relationship with God and everything like that. Um, and I do, and, and, and if you think about um, as far as the spirit being part of creation itself, uh, it's, let's see, let me go back to Genesis 1. So we're, we're popping into Genesis 1, Genesis 2. Um, so Genesis 1, do, 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 do. Got a, I got so many things ahead of my actual passage there. Okay, here we go. So, mm, 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 mm. so Genesis 1 says, um, in the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void and darkness covered the face of the deep while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. That's that word again, that's ruach. Here in this version of the Bible, they chose to uh, translate it as, uh, as wind. And then, but again, it's wind, spirit, breath. So it's another way of saying God's spirit was right there at the very, very, very instance of beginning of creation. So it's so the spirit is very involved with creation. Actually, the Trinity is involved with creation. That's kind of also the point we could say. What I like a lot about this psalm, though, is um, a perspective about God's creation, and that's the phrase uh, in verse twenty-six. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to. Mine says to sport in it. I think that was the way we had it in the. Um, the reading in church. Yours was saying frolic. Frolic. I like that. I like that word. So frolic. frolic yeah. yeah. So this is verse 26 of Psalm 104. Yeah. Does anyone have any other word? I was just so sport in it, frolic in it. Any other? Yeah. See if uh, Johnny's usually the one who pulls up the uh, easy English version or something. You know. Mine says what you made to. Play. To, play, play. to play, to play in it, yeah. To frolic, yeah. Yeah, frolic, sport, play. Yeah, be in a bad mood yeah. and frolic, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it says to Leviathan that you form to sport in it. Sport, yeah, yeah. Sport. yeah. So, what, so what I think is so fun is, isn't that just fun? Sport, frolic, play, and um, that I feel like it's a way of, of kind of saying God wants us to delight in life and that, you know, God's creatures are just, you know, to live their best lives and, and, and be doing as God created them to do. Like what do whales do? They, they spout, they, they sometimes breach out of the water. They, they go and they, you know, they're on the water and then their tail flips up. And um, I just love the notion is that, you know, Whales can be happy in their when you know when they're living their good life, and we get happy to see whales. I know that that's like an excitement that people feel whenever you happen if you can see a whale, like like that's exciting. And then to think that even God is delighted, you know, that God is delighted. And it, and if I broaden that, is it's not just only when whales are doing good, happy whale things. Um, it's, it's another way of saying God is so pleased when every creature, including humans, lives out the fullness of life that God intends. So I, I think of that, that that's God's great desire for all of us, is to live life in the best way that, in, our, in the way God created us to live. So I, I just, I like that, that idea and that that's the best way. And because what that's God's desire that we should be able to live the fullest life as God desires for us. That's why there is a phrase saying, let's get the, let's get the wicked out of here because they'll mess things up, you know, but then, then the truth of the picture is, yeah, but we're part of the wicked too. You know, no one is without sin. So. Do you think it means, uh, get, uh, 
change the wicked? Change, maybe yeah, maybe yeah, transform yeah, the faith, wicked. Transform, yeah. Yeah. Like the, 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 the wicked is no longer yeah. there. Maybe let the, let's get the sin out sin of out here. Let's get the sin yeah. out of here. Yeah. 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 Right. So anyway, um, yeah. The, but I guess it's another way of saying, yeah, unfortunately what does mess up God's good creation is, is sin, right? And sometimes we're part of it too. Um, so that's where we have to turn to God and ask for uh, forgiveness and strength to go back to the where God had actually wanted us to be, <laughs> you know, get back to that place. So anyway, I just, I think it was interesting and I liked the, anyway, it was very fun. I, I might have been a little weirded out about the image of bones and, you know, like getting all reconnected into a human shape again. But this is a fun image, like the, the, the whales jumping and just having a great time and everything like that. So, And, and probably, you know, I just was reading with the bones and uh -huh. the, talk a little loud. And uh, it says in here in the study Bible, it uh -huh. said uh, <clears throat> that you know, this, this was very, you know, eerie for people in that time. It would have sounded eerie too, yeah. in, uh, Not only they speak of death, but for bones to be left in the open was an indignity and a oh, decency yeah. according to Jewish right, custom. Right, yeah. To leave the bones unburied until the uh, bodies unburied until the bones were exposed was unthinkable. Yeah. So it was, yeah. it was just that was, as, it was. That them, was distressing. It was, yeah. To them, yeah. that was just worse than mm -hmm. what we're thinking. Yeah. I think that, no, that's a good point because I think we've lived longer and I mean, you know, if a creature's just out in the open and in the desert, you know, eventually it's just dry bones, right? And that doesn't weird me out, but the, the, the indignity, the huge disrespect, not, not honoring those who have died, that, that was also, yeah. Okay, thank you. That's a good so part of it. was the person to this day that we found, right? Mm -hmm. We were used to animal carcasses and that, but we would Feel, oh, if it person, was a person's bones person you saw, you would just be like, to be yeah. buried or yeah. you know, addressed by his loved ones. I think we would mm -hmm. feel like, oh, that's, mm -hmm. that shouldn't happen. So, yeah. yeah. And they actually buried people and then dig them back up after a number of time to make somewhere I heard something about that that, that they could, when they were just bones, they could throw them in the valley. Oh, I've heard there's places where there's crypts where because the um, the land there's a couple ways the land is so like limited. There's not enough. Yeah. Really. So once the body has turned more to bone, they'll they'll just kind of gather the bones oh. more together. No, this is, yeah. and then the next person who's more recent gets the the plot, yeah. and then out of enough time oh, goes yeah. by. I read that. I know so it is. And then in, in, and I know this is an odd offshoot discussion, but in New Orleans, that's why they have so many mausoleums because of the moisture. They can't put people down below because there's too much water. So they have to build everything, you know, these things above ground. So, um, yeah, it just, just depends on the situation, I guess. Um, all right. Well, let's see. Let's moving on from that discussion. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. What did you find? I went through like 20, 25 different versions of the Bible. It's all play or frolic. Play or frolic was the predominant one. Yeah. Okay. I like that. I like that. Playing or frolicking. Like 25 different versions of the Bible. It's all play or frolic. Yep. Play or frolic. Play or frolic is the most common. What was common word for the uh, and and so oh by the way leviathan I, I always say it's a whale really technically leviathan is just a big big sea creature but i mean if i mean it makes you think of a whale and leviathan is usually grouped with um the uh, behemoth right as like the two large biblical beasts yeah yeah, um, yeah. and and leviathan honestly was also kind of on the scary side actually we think of whales are like oh how cool that is but leviathan was also a little scary so even god isn't afraid though and god can laugh when even something kind of big and possibly scary just is playing around and god's like that's good that's good so i always thought leviathan was a person no, it's it's a cre it's a it's a creature, yeah, yeah. But I I do think of it as more like if you want to put it into today's terms, I do think it more like a whale, kind of like so. 
All right, so we're going to move into um, Acts, but I was going to take on the Acts, and then I'll, I'll let you do the, the gospel. How about that? So um, Acts is an interesting one because it has so many places that it mentions. Uh, places all People had traveled from all over to come, come to Jerusalem, and this was... Uh, Another festival day, uh, we, as I think we're pretty aware that um, Passover was an important Jewish festival day, and then our, Chris, our, our Easter time is related to Passover time. Um, but what we maybe don't always understand is that Pentecost was also another fairly pretty important Jewish festival. Um, the origin of Pentecost was also initially related to harvest. So Passover was kind of around the time of an early harvest time. And then Pentecost was kind of the later later harvest time when crops are a little more, you know, built up. And then there's an the end of the season. That's a different festival, and that's kind of the end of the season harvest. Anyway, there, some of the festivals did connect with certain harvest times, but... Interestingly, and I didn't, I forgot this part. Um, so it wasn't about just cel celebrating a harvest time. It was, it had also taken on, the idea was remembering that God gave the law to Moses. So a, a big element about this celebration was not just say, thank you God for the harvest. It was thank you God for giving the law to Moses. So that was the, a big part of the focus. So Jews would come, just like they would come for Passover, Jews would come from many other places. So they were gathered together in, um, in Jerusalem at this time. And then this is when the Holy Spirit comes to Jesus' followers, and then it becomes the kickoff to the beginning of the church. So, that's, that's, uh, so this is Acts uh, 2, 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the apostles were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt, and parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs, in our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days, I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heavens above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So this is the beginning of, there's more. Um, Peter goes on to give a big message. So there's, there's more that happens, but this is kind of the, the big outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Um, as we saw from our other readings of, from the Old Testament, the Spirit has always been there. 
Uh, but this is where the spirit is now being shared much more broadly to many, many, many people. Um, in the Old Testament, God's spirit would be present for humans in, in, in terms for humans when God was usually like choosing someone to be a leader. So God would you know, kind of like anoint them with the spirit so they would be a leader. Um, also, prophets were you know, given the spirit so they could speak God's message. Uh, priests were also kind of considered to be having God's spirit because they had to serve God in the temple. So it was more to particular people for a particular purpose, you know. Uh, but here, it's more like lots of people. Um, the, the, um, because there were more than just 11 people that got this, because if you go in, let's see, let me get to get back to Acts here. Acts, there we go. Um, they had been already spending time together and they had been um, in prayer, and I think, let me just try to find the spot where it says, do, 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 do. Um, I'm, I'm not picking up. Yeah, there was a place, I know it yeah. says in chapter one, about 120 people, so they'd been hanging out together. That's the point, there was a group of people, and it included men and women. Um, that had been together at this time. So it was, it was this kind of group of people. Um, then, the, then on the day of Pentecost, and this makes sense that God would choose this kind of to begin an opportunity to share about Jesus with a lot of people, because again, um, people had traveled to come. So there were more people in, in Jerusalem than other times. So, and if you think about it, if you reach people who've traveled from other places to Jerusalem and they hear the message, then they, then they travel home and they can take it back with them. So um, its timing was was definitely very, very good. And also too, they're hearing it in their own language. Yeah. They can tell other people in their own language. Yeah, so they can convey it back to the people who speak their, that language. Right. Yeah, yeah. And that's one of the things I, um, I think about is um, that the message is so important that the work of the Holy Spirit was making sure that as many people as possible could hear it. So that's that's the, the miracle is that that the um, the apostles are sharing this word, and I think the others too. I think more again, more than just the apostles are talking to people about Jesus, but the Holy Spirit is making it so they can is the miracle is they can talk and the other people can understand in their own language. I don't know if that means that you know God made them for this time able to speak the other language, or maybe it was more like. Maybe the miracle was God made that the other people could understand what they were saying. Either way, you know, however it is, the main point is God was making sure that as many people as possible could hear about Jesus. That was that was the most important thing. And um, I think you know a thing to kind of consider out of this too is how do we also even today in trying to help others hear about Jesus. But you need to also kind of know their language, right? It's, it's um, and what I mean is yes, knowing the actual language could be very helpful, but it's also more about knowing a person's uh, culture, knowing some of their own life, you know, their own life story. You know, that's the way you have the best chance to start to reach and share with somebody. And I think nowadays in, um, in missionary work, there's a lot more of respect, you know, that, that we, we, it's not just about let, let me tell you, but there's more like, let's, let me listen. Let me listen to let's you. Let's work together here. Yeah, yeah. And I, so I think I'm glad that that's more of a situation and, and, and like more, as much as you're, they're still proclaiming Jesus, they're not, at the same time, they're not on this harsh, you know, like judgment kind of, approach kind of thing but this this was in Jerusalem and these were at this time really these are basically Jewish all Jewish people at the moment um, a few who weren't born Jewish that word proselyte that was in there a proselyte was someone who was not born Jewish but who came to follow the scripture and want to follow God um, I think sometimes if they were extremely serious as a man they actually did do circumcision 
but sometimes the they would just follow everything but not do circumcision so but otherwise they would try to follow uh, as much as they could they would follow all the expectations as if you were a jewish person so that's what proselytes were um but but then there were others who were like they just were confused too like what is this going on I don't know, have, have, have you been in another country where you had no clue what the language was? Like, yeah, yeah. So how does that feel? What do you think that, what does it feel like? Well, it was, in Western countries, it was okay because this you got the alphabet, but I remember being in Korea and in Seoul and, and everything is like hieroglyphics in addition. Mm -hmm. So you'd look for anything sign that had even, like even some silly little English like a sweet spot ice cream or something. Yeah. Yeah. Any so, little bit of something of a language you knew that you could just at least yeah, start from. Yeah, or... I just remember being like so, it was like dizzy. Yeah. Just, the alphabet is just yeah. Like, yeah. Like, you like, like no, like you just don't have a connection. Like how do you, like how do you know where to go or, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like That's trying that, to stop somebody who knows any English or mm -hmm. something. Yeah. yeah. I would. I know. I haven't been into an Asian country myself, but I know. I. I. I'm. I'm sure I would have that same kind of experience because I would feel lost. When it's Spanish, I don't feel so lost. So I. I kind of. I kind of. Um, I feel like comfortable doing that. And I haven't been in. Um, I did travel in Europe with my family when I was only nine, but it's so long ago. I can't honestly remember. Um, you know, I'm sure there were times when I was more confused, especially depending on which country you were in, like whether, like really confused about the language. But um, I, yeah, it was, I didn't feel overwhelmed, but I was also with my family. So I think I had that security blanket the whole time, you know. If you want the loud version of that, you can just send it to an Ikea. Oh, go to yeah. Ikea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, go, go to Ikea, that'll take you. Um, yeah, well, so so I can, I mean, in the sense of if you were thrown into a place where you actually didn't know the language, and so I could see where someone who's in the midst of this and they're hearing a variety of languages and maybe bunches of them that they don't even know, I can see where that would be like, kind of like, what's, what's going on here? What What is happening, you know? So I could see where there would be that sense, some confusion, perplexion, for being perplexed. Um, but then there were those who were, even so, were going to be negative, you know, and that's, that's the sad side of human nature too, that there's gonna be some people who won't see, be amazed, rather they're gonna be judgmental. And, um, but I, th that always makes me smile a little bit because I can see where the, their comment is saying, they're babbling like they drank too much. Like, you know, they don't, they're like, they're drunk and they're just a little of that. But Peter's answer, is just a, refutes it so so well, and I chuckle a little bit. Oh, they can't be drunk. It's only nine in the morning, <laughs> and being in the Las Vegas area, it's like uh, yeah, what's your point? Yeah. nine in the morning doesn't necessarily mean you know they could be drunk, but but in the, you know in their day that that would have been a true statement. But it just yeah, I think the reading this morning was about the, the uh, Tower of Babel, and it said that yeah. everybody spoke the same language. Yeah, and the Lord decided to. Yeah, put them all different places and change the language. Mm -hmm. And yeah, the, the, so, I don't so, know if that's a good thing or bad. Well, thing. okay, I that was I thought the end of that because I read the devotion this mm -hmm. morning too. It says that this is a powerful example of how God didn't want division; He wanted diversity. Diversity, and, yeah, you know, we, yeah. That's a big issue in our mm -hmm. society and it will probably always will be mm -hmm. and uh, I thought that was like oh because yeah. you read it the other way you know, well it is yeah, separation, well, but the purpose and, was to and if we look celebrate at, the and the point of the story here too is God didn't just make all of a sudden that everybody spoke the same language right. no God still respected the diversity right. the variety but but the miracle was let's reach everybody in the language that they understand right. the so, understanding would be common but yeah the understanding could happen diversity would yeah. Um, would add to the situation rather than mm -hmm. cause strife or separation. Yeah. I, th I think you also helped me out with the word way in the beginning. You just said a little something about Moses. Mm -hmm. And I've always kind of wondered why 
did the Holy Spirit, you know, mm -hmm. choose, why did they choose Pentecost? Why this time? And then you kind of said, okay, that what was when the law was. Why John? I didn't hear. Why was ch Pentecost chosen? Chosen as, as oh. for the Holy for, oh, okay. for this to happen. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And what she said very briefly at the very beginning was, Moses got the law from God during that Pentecost yeah. period. Uh, we got the Holy Spirit from God during the mm -hmm. Pentecost period. I hadn't really made that mm -hmm. connection, of, you know, why something happened yeah. when, it, when it did, but now it kind of makes sense to me. Yeah. Well, and if we want to broaden that, if you think about it, when they when they were remembering that God uh, through gave Moses the, the, the law, the law is not just... Um, you know, the Ten Commandments only. It's the first, more like the first Torah means the first five books of the Bible. And then I think, then I can't, I think it probably grew into all of the scripture, just thanking God for that gift of scripture, that that was a blessing. So I think, you know, we maybe we should be remembering that more, that yeah, the blessing, I, I the blessing of God's word, that God gives us this gift of communication. But even this, the Holy Spirit is helping us to understand and the other comment you made where the holy spirit only visited certain people mm -hmm. like moses and but, but, but here now, the god's gift was for yep, everybody yeah right. so uh, yeah there there there's there really are everyone can have the holy spirit now and that's that's the beauty of this message too people everyone can have the holy spirit there's no you know only this person only this no anybody can have the holy spirit so well, let's hop on over to John, the gospel. And um, so, Carol, if you, it's, it skips around a little bit. So it's from John 15, verse 26, 27, and then over to 16, 4 through 15. I'm going to read from this one. With John. Yeah, it's easier to just because it's yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. Well, Jesus said, when the advocate, when the advocate comes, whom, whom I will send to you of the Father, the spirit of truth which comes from the Father, he will testify on my behalf. You also are to testify because you have been with me from the beginning. I did not say these things to you from the beginning because I was with you, but now I am going to him who sent me. Yet none of you asks me, where are you going? But because I have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your hearts. Nevertheless, I tell you in, tell you the truth, it, it, it is to our advantage that I go away, or if I do not go away. The advocate will not come to you, but if I go, I will send him to you. And when he comes, he will prove the world wrong about sin and righteousness and judgment about sin, because they do not believe in me about righteousness because I am going to the Father, and you will see me no longer about judgment, because the ruler of this world has been condemned. I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. And all, all that the Father has is mine. For this reason I said this, I say, that he will take, will take what is mine and declare it to you. It's an interesting passage because even though it's not literally saying Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, it definitely keeps them all close together, right? You know, doesn't doesn't just use a simple phrasing, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but it's all you know, all in here in this in this passage here. So as you know, God is the Holy Trinity, and then um, John John's Gospel probably does talk more. Luke's Gospel does talk a lot about the the Spirit's action and uh, work in the world, but also John's Gospel I think really highlights this as well. And there's. Um, like I said, there's a word in the Hebrew, wind, spirit, breath, that's ruach. In the Greek, most of the New Testament, there's also, it's this, there's one word in Greek, that's pneuma, that also can be translated wind, spirit, breath. Um, that's the word that shows up in um, Acts 2, 1 through 21, that's that word, pneuma. But then here, 
uh, in John's Gospel, we get another word for the Holy Spirit, which is unique, uniquely for John, and that is the word that's translated as advocate um, at the beginning of our reading for today, verse uh, chapter 15, verse 26. And um, the word in the Greek is paraclete, which would be like P-A-R-A-C-L-E-T-E, -E, so paraclete. And then um, it's more literally mean come alongside or be alongside. That's what that word would, um, you know, if you just put it into straight English, just some straight English words, come alongside, be alongside. Um, so, you know, they chose to use the word advocate here. Yes. Well, yeah. I, I looked up quite a few different yeah. um, versions of the Bible. The um, plain English version, along with a couple others, have the word helper. Helper, okay. Uh, Counselor is one. Yep. Counselor. Yeah, Counselor is one. And I think one. my favorite one is from American Standard Version. Mm -hmm. It's comfort. Comforter, yeah, yeah. I've definitely seen some versions where the comforter is the word used, and I happen to also kind of like that a lot. Um, but what I think is kind of cool is, in some ways, that's, that's, that shows, though, that it's, it's a kind of word that has many layers in it. You know, it's not just, hey, let me just put this, this is the clear one and only English word that we will use to translate it. It's, it's good that there's these different nuances because to me, it speaks of the work of the Holy Spirit is a lot. You know, it's, it's not just a comforter. It's also an advocate or it's a helper. You know, it God's it's spirit. It's what we is, need at the time. Yeah, yeah. what do we need at the moment? Yeah. At the moment, we need the comforter. At the moment, we need the helper. You know, like lift you up, the help you. We need the guide. And at the right. moment, we need the guide. Counselor. Yeah. Yeah. Counselor, yeah. counselor, guide, yeah. yeah advocate. So advocate, sometimes we need, I like the advocate idea is, um, kind of interceding for us. And one of the other passages, I think, on the, this might have been in the devotion book too, just real recent, I think I saw this there. Uh, it talks about that when we don't know how to pray, the Spirit intercedes for us. The Spirit helps pray to God when we can't even put it into words ourselves. So I like that. So the advocate, the intercess, interceding of the Spirit for us. Um, and then w the way Jesus is expressing it is, in this context too, kind of teacher. I guess counselor could be similar. I sometimes also think of the phrase teacher because it's it, what Jesus is indicating is that whatever Jesus said was given through the Father to Jesus to share. Now the Spirit is going to help us to to remember and know what 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 God the Father gave to Jesus that Jesus gave to them. And then the Holy Spirit helps us remember what Jesus told and said and did, you know. So the Spirit is kind of like teaching us and helping us remember uh, what all Jesus did. So that's that's another way the Holy Spirit is uh, active in our in our lives. I didn't I did not bring. Oh, you know what? Okay, I'll, let me see if I can pull this up on my phone. This app quickly enough. It's the the Luther's Catechism. And um, let me see. Is it just catechism? I can't remember what it's called. I think it might just, yeah, it's just called catechism, but it's Luther's small catechism. And I don't know if some of you may have uh, learned some of this when you were, you know, growing up. And I know I had to memorize parts of it when I was doing the confirmation years myself, kind of in middle school. To me, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so it, it's Luther gives commentary on some core things like. The Ten Commandments, the Apostles' Creed, baptism, Holy Communion, you know, so gives like just, you know, extra explanation about these. And uh, long ago, it was actually meant to be given to parents to, to help them be able to educate their children about these, you know, going more into Christian faith. All right, so this is his part. The third part of the Creed is the, the Holy Spirit, right? The Apostles' Creed. So I have always. I can't always say it perfectly, so I pulled it up because I know the gist of it, but I don't always say everything perfectly. So I, I, this is what, what does this mean when we have said, I believe in the Holy Spirit, when we say that, what does this mean? I believe that by my own understanding or strength, I cannot believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him, but instead the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy and kept me in the true faith, just as he calls, gathers, enlightens, 
and makes holy the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one common true faith. Daily in this Christian church, the Holy Spirit abundantly forgives all sins, mine and all and those of all believers. On the last day, the Holy Spirit will raise me and all the dead and will give to me and all believers in Christ eternal life. This is most certainly true. But the first part is what I always more know better. I cannot I cannot by my own understanding or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him, but instead the Holy Spirit has called me through the gospel, um, enlightened me with his gifts, made me holy, and kept me in the true faith. It is the Holy Spirit that helps me, gives me faith, and connects me with Jesus Christ. It's not me doing it. It's Forgive the Holy Spirit. Sins to it, right? Yeah, that was in the, yeah, yeah. So anyway, I... That's one part I always do keep coming back to in my own life. It's just kind of refreshing what you said earlier. So, so let's think of like the Holy Spirit as like God in action. Mm -hmm. I think of that way, yeah. yeah making good. making things happen that God wants to happen. <laughs> okay, so that, because so that, I still, even when you're reading that, I'm like, the Holy Spirit, they go about like God. God in action, yeah. maybe that's another way to kind of get a handle through us. Through through us. us. Yeah, through in us, us and through us. Yeah. 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 Yep. And and now more broadly, that's the whole thing about Pentecost. The message more much more broadly. You don't have to be unique. You don't have to be a king. You don't have to be a prophet. You don't have to be a priest. Now every single believer is part of what God wants to do in the world. So, well, let's uh, join in our Lord's prayer. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And may you have a very blessed week. Thank you.